Greetings, Blazely Dragon here. Now, I have seen a private message from someone on YouTube asking me to respond to something that they posted. So, with that in mind, let me show you the original video and PM. So the individual is called Accusing Eyes 92 and she's talking about cryptozoology and was asking for a video response. So, yeah, basically just asking me and anyone, actually this is kind of open to anyone. Uh, I'll probably put the link to the video down below and uh, you can click on it and watch the video. So what is cryptozoology? Because I've never heard of it before. So as always, I do some online research and I found a couple sites that I would like to share with you. First of all, I'm also going to include a link to history.com. There's this uh, program called Monster Quest. And I think that uh, this individual, I'm not sure what his name is, in Monster Quest, looks like uh, Lauren Coleman. He kind of explains what cryptozoology is. And I like his definition, so we're just going to show you a small clip if you want to watch the whole video. Like I said, it's at the History Channel, uh, history.com. But like I said, I'll include that clip. So this is what he says it is. Cryptozoology is the study of hidden or unknown animals. And by that, we mean animals that have not yet been discovered or verified by Western science. I think that is a great explanation. He also goes into describing that pretty much even animals that we've never known about before that we've recently discovered, that is considered cryptozoology too until we discover what they were. So there's brand new you know, animals out in the wild, don't know what they are. Cryptozoologists would then capture these animals, bring them in for study, uh, and then I don't know if they, hopefully they release them. Uh, but basically by you know grabbing these new animals and discovering what they are and then, the, you know, having science recognize them, they move out of the field of cryptozoology. Of course, there are some classic uh, creatures that will always stay in there because we haven't found them, but there's been legends and myths about them. I think he mentions, you know, Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster, and there's a couple other ones that are real big name ones. Uh, I think he lists four, but once again, go to that site. Like I said, I'll include the link at the bottom, so go ahead and uh, click on that and take a look. Also went over a few other sites just to kind of get an idea. There's a Wise Geek, and they talk about cryptozoology, the study and pursuit of elusive animals whose existence is not acknowledged by the scientific mainstream. And they give examples, like I said, with Bigfoot and Loch Ness and Chupabras, whatever those are, and the Beast of Godev. Hey, I can't read. Ha <laughs> ha. And then there's another website that talks about it, too. There's a couple. So just, you know, research cryptozoology. And I also have a book here I would like to share with you by John Michael Greer. He's actually a pretty good writer. Uh, I'm not, like, a huge, huge fan of the book, uh, but some of his evidence, not evidence, <laughs> some of his research and explanation for some things, it, it, it makes some sense. It's pretty good. It's called Monsters. Wall. Let me do it this way so I can actually see what I'm recording might make it a little bit easier. Oh wow, you can barely see the name of that. Anyway, yeah, Monsters has got like two monster eyes, John Michael Greer, and it says at the bottom, An Investigator's Guide to Magical Beings. And in here, it has sections. Let's see, it would be helpful already had the table of contents bookmarked. This is more fun. So the type of stuff you're going to find inside of here, you know, part one on reality of the impossible, and then part two, a field guide to monsters. It has vampires, it has ghosts, werewolves, creatures of fairy, mermaids, dragons, spirits, angels, demons, and then it has, you know, different parts. So it's, it's, it's worth checking out. Um, you can find them online. I'm sure you can probably find them on Amazon or Azure Green. Uh, I won't include links to that. I guess if you request it, I could always add it. But point being is, let's get to the question that I was asked by Accusing Eyes 92. Do I believe in cryptozoology? 
Well, cryptozoology, yes, does exist, obviously. It's, it's an, you know, it's an actual study. I guess she's more asking along the lines of, do I believe in the creatures as far as some of the ones that have not been discovered that they're still seeking? Uh, fairies, dragons, uh, etc. Yes, absolutely. Now, first and foremost, uh, there was a part of her video that she was talking about with a lot of people believe that the cre creatures are astral. Now, sure, I'm sure, sure, yeah, I am sure some of them and most of them are probably astral, but I also believe that there are other planes of existence, such as the abyssal plane, the abyss, uh, the uh, ethereal plane. You know, so I, I guess it depends on the creature and what plane I would feel it exists on. As a primary example, uh, demons would probably exist on the abyssal plane. Uh, angels would exist on the ethereal plane. And then, of course, dragons, sure, on the astral plane. Now, there are, as far as how I believe that these creatures are real, it depends on the creature, you know. Uh, I think werewolves and vampires, once again, these are creatures that there's legends and folklore about, but they're not necessarily proved to have been real yet, or at least not enough hardcore scientific evidence to say that they're real yet. Uh, there, of course, have been sightings, and there's been stories and folklore, and there's tons of ways that people potentially think this stuff could have come about, such as dragons. A lot of, you know, there's dragons, uh, or a dragon-like creature, whether, you know, it be a drake or a wyvern or, a, you know, a worm, W-U-R-M, whatever the case may be, all over. I mean, there's, every region of the world has some sort of a story about a dragon. The thing is, with dragons... There is the theory of seeing dinosaur bones and thinking, oh, well, you know, these are dragons. Uh, then, of course, you have all these different species of different sizes, depending on the region and depending on, you know, that particular area's folklore. I personally think that, myself, sure, some of these creatures, you know, kimono dragons or dinosaur bones, etc., Potentially, these could have started some of the legends and rumors of dragons, but on the flip side of that, I personally feel that dragons are real. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean along the sense of, can they manifest physically in this world? Potentially. There is also a time referred to as the time of legends, which I might mention again later in other videos. And in the time of legends, is pretty much way back in between dinosaurs, you know, a few million years ago, and present-day humans, that there was other civilizations that collapsed and got rebuilt, you know, during the time of Atlantis, you know, way back before then. Modern time and history does not go back that far. Whatever was there is no longer there. So I am under the belief that it is potential, you know, elves, dwarves, and all these creatures that we consider fantasy did physically exist here at one time. That's one theory for me. Now, the other theory, of course, is that they are just astral and they can manifest on occasion. And the best way I can describe it is if an individual watching this is Christian and they believe in angels. To me, dragons are as real as angels are to a Christian. Uh, exa another example would be in Chinese, you know, Chinese history, Chinese folklore, or however you want to re refer to it as, a lot of the Chinese philosophy... Many believe in dragons as these benevolent creatures. They help cause the rains, and, you know, they're usually associated with water. There are other dragons. There's dragons associated with air. Uh, but usually, earth, air, and water are the three dragon associations in China. And they believe that these are like guardian spirits that they can guide and help humans. Yeah, some can be bad as well. But they look at them quite literally like the, the Christians look at angels, these, these benevolent beings that are here to help and guide us. Uh, they're considered, you know, good luck. They're, they're very good creatures, unless you piss them off, obviously. So, I believe dragons are real, absolutely. Vampires, I think that there are different types of vampires. I have a video on that that talk about, you know, the Psy, the, the Sanguinarian, and uh, the hybrids, as they call themselves. And there's also the vampires of, you know, myth and legend that are not necessarily corporeal. Uh, there is, of course, legends of them rising from the dead. I'm not sure if I necessarily believe in them. doesn't necessarily mean that they don't exist. I'm just not sure, uh, personally, from my research. And then, of course, like I said, you know, someone can have a vampiric personality or lifestyle. So I think vampires exist, just not necessarily the way we assume they exist. 
I mean, before, vampires and legends like vampires were always horrible, blood-feeding monsters. And it has been romanticized by some authors, such as Bram Stoker and Anne Rice, that has brought vampires into present-day eye to think of them as these suave individuals who lure people with their looks just as much as their abilities. And I think that some humans can have what's conser considered vampirism with a type of low iron deficiency type of, you know, issues with their body. And I think that consuming human blood, which is a form of cannibalism, could potentially sate some of those issues and cause them to not be as heavy. I think vampirism can also be a choice, uh, which choosing to be a cannibal. Of course, there's, you know, alternatives and other ways of drinking blood. Now, a lot of people might be getting grossed out about that. But you do realize that you consume carcasses, dead bodies, animals. You are eating dead creatures, and you're consuming their flesh. And in many cases, it's being cooked with the blood. So for those of you that are a little squeamish, maybe you need to rethink about how you consume food in general. Now, werewolves... Once again, there are uh, certain skin conditions that cause hair to grow all over the body. Uh, Su Kong Taijian, uh, one of the uh, Shaolin monks from the Fukien Temple, was covered in hair. And there's a couple other ones that, you know, people around the world have been cases of this. Potentially it's related to that. There are also skinwalkers in the Native American tradition who was believed to be able to shapeshift. Uh, there was also, you know shape-shifting abilities in general that you could learn where you take on the traits of another animal. So potentially maybe someone took on the traits of a werewolf, not necessarily physically turning into a wolf, but taking on the traits through a form of shape-shifting. Uh, so, yes, I think a lot of these creatures are real. I think with cryptozoology, I think it's an interesting study. I just never heard, heard about it before. Uh, it's kind of neat to think that there is. So I'm sure there's more research that you can do on all these creatures, and these are just a couple that I'm naming, and there's there's probably hundreds and hundreds. And like I said, some of them in many cases probably really do exist. I mean, if you think of stuff like the blue whale, I mean, I don't, we, we've never had a, a live blue whale that we've been able to get out of the ocean full grown. So they don't know how big necessarily they get. I mean, yeah, with modern science, they've been able to, I guess, see them through the ocean, through the water with seismic waves, whatever the case may be, or they're reading stuff that's all technical science things. Yeah, way to go, Mr. Computer Tech. You talk about, you know, parts of a computer and build them, but I have no idea how they scan for whales. Not my department. Anyway, so... The blue whale, in a way, it's like, it's it, it can kind of, potentially at one time, it was part of cryptozoology. And like I said, I mean, they're discovering new species all the time. They put a submersible into the ocean and they go down to the sea bottom that we can't get to and depths that humans or subs can't get to with a human in it and you're seeing these brand new creatures that's still cryptozoology so cryptozoology is a very rational logical real science it's just some of the necessarily subject matter like i said such as sasquatch bigfoot abominable snowman some people consider them all to be the same uh dragons fairies elves uh, whatever the case may be, a lot of these is what gets people saying, well, here's the thing, though. If there's all these legends and all these talks about it, there's some sort of evidence in real life. I mean, even if it's a misconception or something misconstrued, or potentially it's not, like I said, maybe there's not around anymore. There's all these possibilities, but when things keep getting repeated, I mean, there's got to be something behind it. So, that's just my opinion and this video has gone on way too long, so I'm going to try to keep them shorter. So there's cryptozoology. There's my answer for accusing eyes 92. Check out the links below, and feel free to give feedback. Take care.